you haven't used raised beds before, there's a reason why people utilize them. They get the plants up off the ground, have much improved drainage, especially if you're in a heavier clay soil, for instance. They're generally filled and amended with an improved soil. And so you got really good root penetration, potentially higher yields. They also warm up quicker in the spring. So that soil warms up more rapidly than the soil in the ground. So you could have seeds that are germinating more quickly, for instance, like some of your early spring direct seeded crops and warmer soil for rooted transplants. They're a lot easier to work with in terms of stooping and bending. They can be a lot more comfortable to work with over time. You have the tidy appearance in a yard. So if you're concerned about that, they look really appealing in the landscape. And they can also be used on rooftops and patios and, and other areas, even where folks just have concrete or some other material underneath there. So when we're thinking about raised bed materials, we need to think about you know, what definitely not to use. And so old treated lumber, chromated copper arsenate was treated with that. And that has a bunch of chemicals that we don't want to get into our garden, but also things like railroad ties, which can be, you know, commonly found cheap or used or treated with creosote as well as utility poles. So you want to avoid things like that. And then there is penta treated lumber. The active chemical is pentochlorophenol. And that's another one that we should be avoiding for raised bed materials. I just mentioned this one. I went to pick up a bunch of cement blocks one time because I wanted to build uh, some raised beds. And when I got there, it was from a foundation and they were covered in paint. And likely if it's old paint, it's lead paint. So just keep that in mind. There are newer wood treatments, and there's a fair amount of information on some of these newer wood treatments. The most common one is ACQ up on the top there, alkaline copper quaternary. And most of these, your wood in theory should have a tag stapled to the bottom of it that tells you, you what it's treated for and, and what it can be used for. And so I found some pretty good information from some universities. All of these are copper based. And so the first one, there's been some studies shown that this one's pretty much non-toxic by normal dermal and oral exposure. So, you know, if you're touching the raised bed and then touching your mouth kind of thing or getting that in your mouth, it's shown to be pretty much non-toxic. The second one, um, probably a less common wood treatment, it has been shown that it could cause toxic exposure to children, but essentially it made it sound like they'd have to be essentially licking their hands to get that residue into their body. But, you know, just some things to, to think about here. The last one has shown that it doesn't really move through soils too well. So, not necessarily like super conclusive research on all of this, but a, a study of these different wood treatments showed that the amount of residue in soils were 10 to 100 times lower than what's considered toxic to humans. And it should be noted that, you know, copper is a naturally existing element. It's one of the essential nutrients for plant growth. But if you are still concerned about using these options, you could paint them or stain them with the oil-based stain. You could also put a plastic liner between the soil and wood just to kind of remove any potential for contact there. But I know there's a lot of materials out there don't use treated lumber for raised beds. A lot of that points back to some of the arsenate products. There are some new wood treatments out there that are mainly copper-based. So I know a lot of folks like to use cinder, cement, and concrete blocks. One potential concern is these may contain fly ash. And unfortunately, there's not labeling on cinder blocks that tells you whether fly ash was used. And unfortunately, there's not really any studies on whether or not these will leach heavy metals into the soil because fly ash is a coal byproduct and it does contain heavy metals. So an option to prevent soil contact would be using a, a polymer-based paint or a, a plastic liner between the blocks in the soil for these types of materials. And these types of materials are probably going to be some of the ones that you're going to find most readily available used for purchase, which may be a, a cheap option. Another option would be to use an untreated lumber product that's a decay resistant species. So when we think about what's decay resistant, I have a list up top there. Osage Orange is kind of the standout. It is an expensive lumber and not necessarily widely available at the big box stores, but cedar is very rot resistant and is, is widely available as well. There are some oak species listed up there, but most oak available at big box stores is, is red oak, so not necessarily as decay resistant as some of those types of oak that are listed up there. 
cedar and redwood, those are probably your most commonly available woods that are on that list up there. You don't want to use pine because it really has no rot resistance and will decay rather quickly, especially in our humid environment with a lot of rain and humidity. So those recycled plastic timbers are also an option, not necessarily the cheapest option, but they will last a really, really long time. So one thing to consider, we do have a really great forest product industry in the state of Missouri. And so MDC has a great website where you can find lumber mills in your area. And so one thing that I did when I ran a little vegetable farm, I wanted to make a really big raised bed for growing lettuce mix. And so I think I built about a hundred feet long, about seven to eight inches tall, and I did that all with what's called side cuts or slab cuts from milling logs. And so I just have a picture on the side there. It's not necessarily a clean, perfect piece of lumber, but for about 20 bucks, I was able to fill up the bed of my truck with some of these cedar slabs. So they're, they're very rot resistant. So that could be an option for you. And those cedar, Osage, orange, bur oak, white oak, those may be available from, from a local lumber mill, whether you're looking for you know a slab waste product or milled lumber. So in terms of ways that we can reduce costs, you could check with your local lumber mills. Generally, a business that's a lumber yard or a lumber supplier is probably going to be cheaper than big box stores. So you might want to check with them and see if they sell to consumers or if they have order minimum. But if you can get something from a lumber yard or a lumber supplier in your area, it's probably going to be cheaper than a big box store. You know, we have a lot of great online marketplaces now where you can get leftover construction materials for probably a much reduced cost than you would if you're purchasing them new. Things like timber blocks and clay bricks, you know, used cattle troughs. They also make galvanized fire rings like this. If you want to stay really cheap, you can use just a temporary raised bed where we're just kind of digging and mounding the soil above the ground. It's going to give you some of the benefits of a, a framed raised bed, not quite as much soil warming and probably not quite as much drainage, but that is also an option. And it's going to give you a little bit better drainage and root growth than if you planted kind of directly in the ground. As opposed to building a bunch of raised beds with lumber that's not necessarily of desirable quality, you could just go ahead and start with a small raised bed and kind of expand as you grow. And I want to thank one of our master gardeners from St. Charles County, Kevin Menard, who provided some of these pictures for me today.